Hi, welcome to Health Advocates Ask the Expert series, a monthly show about trending topics in healthcare. I'm your host, Courtney Prizer. Today, we're talking with Pam Mortensen about the shift from workplace wellness to well-being. Pam is Health Advocates Executive Vice President of Wellness Solutions and focuses on balancing technology with personalized support to improve employee health. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here, Courtney. Thank you for having me. Great. So, what is the difference between traditional wellness and well-being that we're hearing about now? Yes, well well-being is certainly the buzzword mm -hmm. in the market right now, but wellness was really more traditional physical programs, right. uh, really around smoking cessation or nutritional type programs. And now the shift is really moving more to a holistic mm -hmm. set of programs that are really called well-being solutions. And that incorporates physical wellness programs along with financial wellness as well as emotional and behavioral type of programs. So really looking at where the employee is in their life and really addressing those particular needs that the employee has with various programs. Great. So why do you think we're seeing this transition now? Yeah, you know, um, it's pretty challenging out there in the marketplace right now for employers and the rising costs of health care costs in, it, mm -hmm. them, in themselves is continuing to increase. Six and a half to eight percent are typically what a lot of these employers are facing in terms of increased uh, plan costs. So they're looking for value solutions that they can bring, valuable um, benefit solutions that they can bring to their employees. So it's the it's kind of three things I would say right now that employers are really focused on. One, they want to drive health care costs down through these programs. Two, they want a healthy population of employees that are going to be very productive and be there present and not have a lot of absent employees, right. that's very key. And then again, as I said, really bringing a set of programs to an employee base that really brings value. They see value in those programs. Makes a lot of sense. So you've touched on this a little bit, but what are some of the benefits of a well-being program mm -hmm. in the workplace? Yeah. Um, you know, employers are certainly trying to deal with the challenges of rising health care costs. And developing programs that are very personalized to the individual employee is critically important. And so going beyond, again, just physical wellness to a broader sense of a, a well-being to include things like financial um, support programs. Um, it could very well be emotional, um, behavioral type programs that are very specific. And I think employers are starting to recognize their populations are very diverse. And employee, an, an employee that might be a 50-year-old woman that's single um, versus, you know, someone that's 30 years old that has three children, they have very different program needs. And being able to provide a diverse set of programs is really important to that employer and really to help drive kind of that value again that I spoke of earlier to the employee themselves. Makes sense. And it seems to bring together a lot of traditional programs but package them in a new and exciting it does. way. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So how can employers adopt this approach and as a further on, how can they engage their employees to take the next step? You know, engagement is just so critical. And uh, what we often see, of course, right now is the increase around incentives, um, offering some kind of a financial reward for participating, and really um, driving maybe lower premiums or offering uh, points to be rewarded based on your participation levels that you could maybe redeem those points toward gift cards cards or things of that sort. I do think um, incentives will continue to be something that are offered out there. I think they'll continue to be restructured right. and there'll be different pilots that, that employers try because uh, every culture is very different sure. and I think certainly going out as you start to implement a wellness program, it's critical that you understand the culture within your employee base and probably conduct some kind of a survey on the front end to really see what the needs are across your employee base and then start start to develop programs around that. And I think the other critical point as employers start to move forward with these programs is don't try to bite off too much in terms of your objectives and what you're trying to accomplish. 
take it one year at a time and really set a measurable goal that you want to achieve at the end of that year through these programs. And then the following year, maybe there's a couple of objectives that you try to achieve and just continue to mature and enhance it through experience and how your employees engage in those programs. Absolutely. So what are some of the ways that Health Advocate's program is unique for a well-being yeah. approach? You know, Health Advocate um, it really, I think, brings it all together. Mm -hmm. I think we can be a one-stop shop for an employer and there's so many competitors and providers of these services out there in the market and some are very very niche with their services but I think what really makes Health Advocate unique is that we've got a lot of the clinical expertise nurses coaches that can really engage a patient or a member I should say to really drive um, different lifestyle and behavioral changes but in conjunction with that we also use technology and we outreach uh, to remind someone to to, um, enroll or activate or show up for a coaching session through text messages or it could be email or automated voice. So we really try to do a blend of communication to keep that employee engaged through our live coaches along with technology. I also would, would tell you the other unique piece is that we really bring a whole well-being solution to an employer. So it's not just the physical wellness programs, but it's the financial wellness programs along with mental and behavioral um, type of programs. So really an all-inclusive integrated approach along with our expertise and years of experience um, that we really bring to an employer. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Great. And thank you for tuning in. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll subscribe to our channel and follow us on our social media pages. And join us again next time for another edition of Ask the Experts.